slash chords. What are they? Why do they exist? I'm going to show you all that and I'm going to show you how to play some of them. There are two common ways to write out slash chords, okay? Um, at least the way I was taught. So when you see this, something like um, let's say G with a slash and then a C. Okay, let's break this down. The, this letter means something and this letter means something different. Okay, so when you see this letter over here, what that is, is the chord. Okay, so when you see this, you play a G major triad and this here whoops is the bass note so what the composer or arranger wants you to play is uh, a C in the bass which is a happens to be a different note than the root of this chord and you get a completely different sound, okay? And the same thing applies when you see this. At least this is the way I was taught. If you saw this, G over C, that essentially is the same thing. But we're gonna save this for a little bit later too because uh, there's some different opinions on that. But th this is the way I was taught, that this equals this. So this would be the chord up here, and this is the bass note here. Hopefully you can read that. <laughs> um, every time I got to reach over, I'm, I'm, I, cause I don't want to block this off, but anyway, so that's the two ways you can have a slash going this way, or you can have it almost like, a, I guess both of them are kind of like fractions, but one over top of the other, these are side by each. Okay. One of the main reasons, uh, that I was taught why both of these could work for the same thing is let's say Luckily, I drew out a or ha I have a staff here if you coming along a piece of music and we have G over C here Which is which is not so bad if that's the only chord that you have in the measure but what if you have a whole bunch of other chords? Maybe it's a slow song, a ballad that has a new chord change every beat or something like that. Well, it starts to get really busy looking. And maybe there's other chords that aren't slash chords that are in there that are long. Um, it doesn't give you much room. So this is a, a, a space saver if you were to write this. It takes up a lot less space. Let's talk about some reasons why we would use these chords, okay? So, one of the main reasons, or one, one reason, one really good reason, is a really quick way of the composer or the arranger to get the player to play inversions of a chord. So let's say we have a D chord which is fine, it's a plain old D chord. But maybe the composer is going for this sound. They want you to play this. So the notes in a D major triad are D, F sharp, and A, okay? So what they want you to do is put that note on the bottom. It's just one of the chord tones. Um, you're just flipping the notes around. That's what's called an inversion, and you have that sound. This is what that sounds like. Or you could do this. You can have the fifth of the chord in the bass. So this would be the root, 
the third, the fifth. So maybe you go for that note in the. So it's just a really quick way, instead of writing out, oh, uh, something like this, like F sharp, D with A in the bass, okay? So instead of having to write out the specific, a specific voicing, all you need to do is just do that. The player knows exactly what to do. And that's what this chord sounds like. Or what if the composer writes a four part chord, a D7 chord, and they want you to play that underneath it, okay? So in this case, that's our flat at seventh. So we're now putting the flat seven in the bass. And that's what this sounds like. Now, could you play this instead, D over C? Because we have a little bit of redundancy here, right? Or duplication there. The seventh note is the C. So why not leave the seventh out here and just put this in the bass? Well, you can. That would actually work just fine. But maybe the composer or the arranger has something specific they want you to do. Like maybe, maybe this is a chord progression. It starts off with a D7 chord and then the next chord to that is D7 over C. And then now you're seeing some logic. Okay, so you hear you, this is the root note D, it drops down to C. It's less confusing because you're seeing, okay, the continuity of D7 is staying there. It's just drop the, the bass note drops to C. And uh, maybe it goes to G over B next. So you're, the bass line's dropping down a whole step, then down a half step to B, okay? So, not that this is super confusing, but when you're sight reading something, you wanna, or when you're writing something for somebody to, to read or sight read, maybe they haven't seen it yet. That's the first time they're reading it. You wanna try to keep everything as, as uh, simple as possible, keep the continuity going, to make it as easy as possible for them to read. So that's a good reason why. And here's a comparison, if you want, between these two sounds. It's not that drastic. So D7 over C versus D over C. I've heard other people on YouTube and on the internet say that slash chords are just shorthand for other regular chords. <laughs> maybe some of the time, maybe some of the time, but, uh, but not all the time, okay? I, I kind of take a little bit of issue with that. Let's take um, this chord. D over G, okay? Um, that might look something like this. Let's put, um, let's put D on, as the top note. So there's our D major triad, okay? And then there's our G bass note, okay? Some, um, if some people who know um, more about chords that are out there, if you're walk looking at this and you're like, well, that's just basically a G major nine, and you wouldn't be too far off, okay? 
all this, all we have to do is add one note to this to make it sound like G major nine. What's missing is this B note right here. Not that this would be super easy to play on guitar, mind you. Uh, maybe totally not impossible, but I would have to think about how to play that particular voicing on guitar. Um, so this note right here, and maybe, maybe what I'll do, so I'll use a different color for notes that are missing. So I'll use this red color. So in a G major nine voicing, typically one would put the third of the chord in there, which is a B note. And that's our B note that's missing. Whereas the D over G chord, all in blue, does not have the B. And that's what gives you the defining, um, that's the defining, a very defining note, that B, that third, that, that tells you it's G major, okay? So without that B, it's not quite a B, or it's not quite a G major nine sound. It's true that, you, you know, you could substitute this chord for that and get away with it perfectly fine, or one for the other, more, more or less, probably. Um, but slash chords do have a, a, a different sound. They have a different vibe, okay? I like, it's really hard to explain, but I'm gonna try. A slash, most slash chords, especially when you have the bass note that's a different uh, note that's not in the chord, okay? Is you, they sort of hint at something without being direct. It's a little more vague, a little more open sounding. That's probably a really good way to describe this actually is it's more open sounding. And let's, let's hear an example of a difference between these two sounds. It'll be sort of subtle, but there is a difference. When you're composing, you don't have to stay in one key, okay? And these chords are great because they do have a more vague sound to them. You can kind of meander around within <laughs> your song and not stay within a certain key. So they work really, really well. You can, um, you can use, 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 what was that? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Using them in parallel harmony is really, really effective. That's another way where you can use them. Um, here is an intro that you're going to listen to that uh, descends down in whole steps in parallel harmony and ends up resolving on a D minor 9 chord. And it's going to sound very reminiscent of a Steely Dan kind of vibe. So one other question you might be having is, do you have to play both letters in a slash chord? And that would be a very, very good question to ask. Let's say you come across um, this chord like this, okay? And some cer certain uh, situations, this could sound kind of funky because we're putting the seventh in the bass, but other times it's gonna sound exactly correct. It's gonna be exactly what you what's needed to be heard or played or what the composer or arranger intended. Now, I have to explain, uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna ask me this question, do I have to play both letters? Do I have to play do I have to play the C chord and the B bass note when I'm doing it? Like let's say you're a guitar player like me, or even a piano player. 
It's a little e it's much easier to do on piano than guitar most of the time. Well, it, the answer would be yes and no. Um, it all depends what cir circumstance you find yourself in. If I'm backing up a vocalist and I'm the only instrument that's backing them up, then I'm going to tend to play the triad, do my best to play the, the bass note and the and the, the bass note and the triad together at the same time. Okay, the way the maybe the way the song goes, let's say the way someone is used to hearing it, especially the vocalist, because I'm backing her up. But if I'm playing in a band situation, I just might forego playing the bass note altogether. I don't need to because let the bass player play that. And then if there's a keyboard player in the band, they'll probably be playing B in the bass too in their left hand more than likely, and then the triad in the other hand. Hopefully that clears that up. You don't have to play both unless you want to get that sound. I would want to get that sound if I'm the only instrument. Now, let's explore some common uses of slash chords, okay? If you have the fifth of the key that you're in, let's say, even if it's just temporarily you're in that key, and you have the fifth of that the fifth note of that key is in the bass note and then you put a major triad where the root of that triad is a whole step below that root note or that bass note I mean so something like this uh, G over A we tend to think of the G being above the A note so when I when I said the root note for the triad is a whole step below. I just meant letter-wise, okay? Not uh, literally. <laughs> okay, so this is this here. This is a really good um, substitute for a sus chord, or even closer, a let's put it this way: a G seven sus. Or if you want to even get closer, a G9 sus. Let's 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 figure out why. Okay. So let's say we have we'll put our G major triad in. Really simple. And then we have an R A bass note. If we were to look at, um, or I, 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 whoops, I meant to may say A9 sus. And here I'm thinking G, but remember our bass note is A. And that's, that's the, the thing that about slash chords that can be a little bit ambiguous. Do you call sometimes? Some people think of it as a G chord with just a different bass note on the bottom. Other people tend to think of it, well, it's the it's this chord, it's based on this bass note, and then whatever you're playing above, okay? Uh, and there might be some certain circumstances where it's harder to analyze it that way where you're thinking of the bass note. But in this case, you could. Okay, this is a really good case. So remember how I said sometimes. There's less information in these. That's what makes them sound a little more ambiguous, open sounding, more airy sounding, and and should I and dare I say more modern sounding. Um, if we wrote out an A9 sus chord, really the only note that's missing is the E. And you know we could put the E here, we could put the E here. It doesn't really matter. Okay. It's not really important where the E goes, but that's the only note that's missing. It's not really that important. So if you analyze it from here, that's just the fifth of an A chord. It's not really all that important, okay? It's gonna sound slightly different, but when you start leaving notes out, 
it almost sounds cooler. <laughs> Less is more almost, okay? You'll, you'll find this type of chord where you have the fifth in the bass of, of the key that you're in. And then this is the fourth chord of that key. So it's kind of like a, a four over five kind of thing. You'll find that used in gospel and R&B a lot. In jazz too, but especially gospel and R&B, you'll find it really, really uh, prominent. Matter of fact, there's, um, there's an Earth, Wind & Fire song called September. You've probably heard of it. It uses the, this exact chord. Let's keep going. Let's, let's explore some other chords. If you have, if you are come across a chord like this, C7 flat nine, okay, you can play this chord instead. This is a great sounding chord. Very, very hip, very modern. Um, I could have wrote it out like this too. I could have wrote it out G flat over C because, you know, F sharp and G flat are the enharmonic equivalent to each other. Each one of these is a tritone apart. And if we were to analyze this and write this out, what we're getting is, I'll put the A sharp on top, um, F sharp here, and a C sharp here. And it's gonna be over our C bass note, okay? If we were to analyze it, that A sharp or if we're thinking G flat, that would be a B flat note, okay? Or this would be G flat, and this would be, um, or this would be B flat. Oh, no, this is da, D flat, sorry. This is a C sharp, D flat. So B flat, G flat, and uh, D flat would be enharmonic, enharmonic equivalents if we're thinking G flat. But let's think F sharp for now, okay? So, this is going to sound like the flat nine because it's, it's like a D flat. This right here is our sharp 11. And all this is up here because it's enharmonically equivalent to a B flat. That would be our flat nine. Okay. So essentially, we are now getting. Uh, sorry, <laughs> you'd think that I've, I've never done this before. Actually, you know what? This is my third time making this video because my camera kept shutting down. But anyway, that is not the flat nine. This is the flat nine. This is the flat seven. It's B flat and harmonically equivalent. Okay, so we end up getting this type of sound, uh, a C7 flat nine, sharp 11 sound. Cool, right? This is what F sharp over C sounds like. Let's try another chord type. How about something like this? D over E flat. Well, you might, if you're astute, you might think, well, that's a D major triad with a flat nine in the bass. You could think of it that way, but it's not gonna necessarily sound that way unless you play it really, really, really low, and then it might sound a bit muddy, okay? Um, think of it more like this, like we have an F sharp, that's our third, the D, the A, 
and we have an E flat as our lowest note. Okay, I'm thinking of it more like like that. So that voicing is an amazing substitute for a diminished, like in this case, E flat diminished seven chord. And you might be thinking, well, how is that? Well, believe it or not, there's a D major triad within this uh, E flat diminished scale. Okay, so let's let's analyze what we got here. Okay, so we have the F sharp would be the flatted third. The A is the flatted fifth of that chord. Okay, because we would technically call it a B double flat, but B double flat is the same as A. And this is would end up being the major seven. So the the one note that's missing is a D flat, or let's see, a D double flat, because it would be a D double flat, which would be equivalent to a C. So it's kind of like a D seven chord over an E flat bass. And so really what's happening is you have a, just an E diminished triad if we if we if we leave that C out and you're adding a major seventh to that chord. So it's like E diminished add major seven. So because we, we took there's no C involved. C is the double flatted seventh for a E flat diminished seven. And this is a really hip cool sound. I use it all the time. Um, Jim Hall used to use this sound all the time. Ed Bickert used this sound to a certain extent. Um, it's, it's very modern sounding, uh, to put it bluntly. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised that Stravinsky or somebody like that would have used this, this sound too. Some Russian composers. It sounds like that. Don't quote me on that, but that's what it sounds like to me. Um, matter of fact, there's in in um, the jazz standard this song is you. We could there's this uh, chord in there. Well, not that chord exactly, but there's an E flat diminished seven chord that's in the song is you. We could replace this chord for that chord in that song, and this is what it would sound like. <laughs> Another thing that slash chords are great at, without having to do what I'm doing here, like write out actual voicings using standard notation, is to show in the chord symbols some movement, okay? You can create more interest as a composer or arranger by creating movement. So let's, um, Let's start with the bass line. Let's make the bass line move somewhere, okay? So let's try something like this. Let's go G over, and I'm gonna, this is more or less gonna be, when I, I'll, I'll, I'll explain. So G over C, okay? And then the next chord is gonna be G over B. Okay, that's one measure, so um, there'll be, two chords within one measure. When I put a comma, next measure, okay? N not that this is great um, music notation, but I'm just, and I'll play it for you in a sec. But right now, I just want to write it out and explain some something go that's going on. And then F to F over A. New, new measure would be A flat, major seven. See, there's no rule saying you can't, you have to use all slash chords. I'm throwing in a, a regular chord here, A flat major seven, and then B flat major triad over an A flat bass. 
next measure E flat major 7 over G and let's make that one whole measure of that chord to F over G to an F minor over G. Aha, something new we haven't done yet, right? And then it finally ends on the same, same um, thing that we got here. Okay, end of our little chord progression. So let me explain what's happening. So we start off with C in the bass and this is, you could say that substituting in a, in a way for uh, some kind of C chord, a C major nine maybe, but it's missing a note, so it's not gonna sound exactly like C major nine. But what's happening in the bass, let's, look, let's take a look at the bass. So we have C as the root, it drops down a half step to B natural, and then it drops down to B flat, and then A, see we have this descending bass line happening. And then the A drops down to A flat, for the A flat major seven. Then it stays on A flat and then drops down another half step to G. We stay on G, G, and then resolve back to our G over C chord. Now this could have been any C chord and it, maybe we could have figured out some other kind of thing to resolve to. But let's check this out. This is that same chord I was telling you about that replaces the nine sus chord. So if you're thinking of this in the key of C, that's the fifth in the bass, that's the four chord. So it's like four over five, and then this is four minor over five. So this is kind of like a G nine sus chord. And then what's happening over here is this is kind of close to a G7 flat nine chord, but sus. Okay, so it's like a sus chord with a flat nine on top of it. It's a very cool sound, and that's one quick way to get close to that sound. Okay, and uh, this is what this. This is what the chord progression sounds like. It's cool, right? Or we could do something like this. This is cool too. Let's pick, let's use these chords and, and it'll be a maybe a different vibe here okay so now we're going to keep the a major triad st the same on top for as long as we possibly can and just have the bass moving okay so we go a to a over g Next measure would be A over F sharp to A over an F. Uh-huh, okay. And, and, and it's not an inversion. If it was F over A, that would be an inversion of an F chord, but this is not. This is an A major triad. It has a C sharp in it, okay, over an F bass. Okay, and then we end up going to um, A over E, and then that, maybe, maybe we'll make one measure of that, and that will resolve to some kind of an A chord. Uh, let's make it, just to add a little color, let's make it an F, an A add nine. Okay, so before we hear it, you're hearing this, the same triad on top and just the bass note keeps falling. That's another cool sound, okay? We could argue that, well, we could, why didn't we just write this chord in here? 
because essentially that's what A over F sharp is. It's, it's really just F sharp minor seven. But here again, it throws the continuity off, right? It, it's a little bit jarring to the eye when you're, you, you don't know the chart, you're reading it for the first time. Why make a player analyze A, A over G, oh, I have to put, uh, it's, it's an F sharp minor seven, I have to maybe change my voicing or something, right? Um, not everybody can, can think, think, think that fast. You can't expect somebody to do that all the time. So this keeps the continuity going. It's, yes, many of us already know that A over F sharp is the same thing as an F sharp minor seven chord, but now you don't have to think. I just keep A, A, A going, and all I have to worry about is the bass note dropping. Okay, this is where it comes in handy. This is what this chord progression sounds like. Let's create movement in a different way. Let's keep the bass note stagnant in our chord progression. That's called a pedal tone, okay? And we'll make the chord chords on top of our pedal tone change. So maybe we'll do something like this. A major seven, and that goes to a D major seven over A, okay? Then um, G major seven over, well, maybe, you know what? Maybe I should, now let's just keep, let's do this. Let's keep it two chords per measure. G major seven, um, oops, forgot to put the bass note in, because remember, we're gonna keep the bass note the same all the way through. And then that goes to a C major seven over A. Next measure is F major seven over A to a B flat over A. And then we'll and on another A add nine. So let's analyze this real quick. A bass note, 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 A stays constantly all the way through. And just the chord changes on top. And I just happen to choose that each chord moves up a fourth because D is a fourth up from A, G is a fourth up from D, C, may, C is a fourth up from, from C, F is a fourth up from C, or C is a fourth up from G, sorry, and then F is a fourth up from, a, from C, and then B flat is a fourth up from F. I didn't make this a major seven, I could have, but I just decided to go with this sound. I, it could have been B flat major seven over A, would have been perfectly fine, but I decided to just make that a triad, and then it's gonna resolve back to a chord that's similar to our first chord, okay? And let's have a listen. So, you know, I, we could go on and on and on for different, different examples of, of uh, slash chords, but I just, this is kind of almost more like an introduction to slash chords for you. If you just to get you used to the sounds and and maybe how to start thinking of them, how to start incorporating, how to interpret them when you see them. Can you have two chords instead of just a chord and a bass note? Yes, you can. Those are called polychords, okay? Those are not slash chords. Um, sometimes they're often referred to as bitonality or bitonal. Now let's talk about this, because there's, there, there's a, a little bit of confusion um, 
on the inter interwebs <laughs> about what is what. See, uh, this is what I was referring to at the beginning of the video. If you see this, G over C, a lot of people would say, well, that's a slash chord, okay? And if you see this, that is a bitonal chord. That's a poly chord. But I never got taught that. What I got taught was you can, you can write uh, poly chords this way or this way, just like you can with, um, with slash chords, except you have to be more specific of what, what, what you're doing. Like let's say um, you have something like this, C major seven, right? You want that chord and then um, let's pick uh, another chord. Let's say um, E major seven. Okay, that'll be now. That's a poly chord. That's two different chords happening at the same time. And uh, trust me, as a guitar player, <laughs> those kinds of things are much, much harder to play. And if we were to write out that same chord again, C major seven, like this way, over E major seven, there's no difference. But we have we have differentiated. See, if we were we just wrote this, let, let's say. Let's say this, now it's getting confusing, right? Maybe you want just an E triad there, okay? But if you look at it, you go, well, that's just C major seven with E in the bass. So the way to let people know it's a polychord is you have to do this. If you don't want that to be just a bass note, then you have to say E, e major triad. Does that make sense? Like I said, they're a little bit trickier to play on guitar than it is piano, because we have on guitar we have less strings, we have less fingers, less ways to play the notes. Sometimes um, it's literally impossible to play every note. Okay, let's pick one. One of my favorites that I liked. It's, it's a very hip, modern, unique sound. This C major over, uh, whoops, I did it backwards. I'm getting so excited. <laughs> uh, B major over C major. It's a very cool sound. This bitonal chord, this poly chord, we could have wrote it out like this, right? Um, like this, so B major over C major. And that doesn't take up all, as much space as writing this out because essentially you're kind of getting the same sound and, and maybe what I'll do is I'll write this out. Um, this, well, what, I don't know why I drew a line. I meant to draw, draw an equal sign. So this poly chord you could argue just sounds like C major seven with sharp nine, sharp 11. Where this might, especially if you're not used to that chord, because that's, that's kind of an outside chord. That's not a very common chord that you're gonna run across. It sort of goes against the rules. They, a lot of people say, well, you're not supposed to put a sharp nine on a major seven chord. Well, it's getting to be more common all the time. And this is a really a good way to, to uh, notate that, is that that's almost easier to, to read than that in some ways, okay? So let's say we have a B, a F sharp there, D sharp, and a B here. Now, as a guitar player, I, and you know what, there's some, um, there's some uh, crossover here, right? Uh, or actually, no, there isn't. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking of something else. Um, so here's, Here's what we can do to get our C major 
sound is just play the root and the third. We don't necessarily have to put the fifth in. We could, but like I said, on guitar, that's virtually impossible. You can do it on piano, not that hard, but on guitar, it's next to impossible. If you can figure out a way to play that chord with that voicing on guitar, please let me know. Okay, leave it in the comments, send me an email, something. Um, so what we do, that's why I did it in red, I'll, I'll leave that note out and I'll just play this as the C major triad because, or the C major sound, because you got the, the root and the third, because we have to have the C on the bottom. Uh, well, I guess, I guess we don't have to have the C in the bottom, but that's the way I do it anyway. And then you got your B major triad on top. This is what this chord sounds like. Um, well, by the way, before we hear it, Monk, Thelonious Monk, has been known to play that type of sound ahead of his time. And uh, Kurt Rosenwinkel is another person who loves that type of sound. This is what it sounds like. B major over C major. So that's polychords. I just wanted to give you a taste of polychords and understand that there is a difference between slash chords and polychords. I could get into a whole topic of just polychords on a video all by itself, but we're not gonna do that today. If you found this lesson helpful and you wanna learn more about traditional jazz chords and how to read chord symbols, this video will get you understanding triads and four-part chords on a much deeper level.